All right, so circuit notes. Um, this is uh, eventually what our circuit diagrams will end up kind of looking like. This is a battery. These things are electrical connections, one version of drawing a light bulb, and then the electrical connections back to the battery. So um, there are a few things that we're gonna just assume with circuits. Um, we're just going to assume that if the circuit works, then something's flowing. That means like if a light bulb lights up, if a motor spins, uh, if sensors are working, then something is flowing in that circuit. Um, in reality, we now, uh, in our current day, we believe the thing that's flowing in most circuits, at least in wired circuits, electric circuits where you have uh, things flowing through a metal wire, uh, we consider those things to, we know those things to be electrons, but due to some weird history stuff, there's some messy things there, but um, in terms of thought processes, but something is flowing if this thing works. Uh, another assumption, if we have multiple bulbs that are all identical, if we have uh, identically made light bulbs, then the brightness is an indication of the amount of flow. So if, uh, if we have two identical bulbs and one's brighter than the other, well, the one that's brighter has more flow. Um, if we have two bulbs that are made differently and they have different brightnesses, then there might be other things at play and we can't say that the brighter one has more flow. There might be other things going on. All right, um, a basic definition. We, and we had talked about some of these things uh, when we were talking about just plain old charges in the uh, electrostatic stuff. Um, insulators are just materials that it's difficult for charges to move through. Um, rubbers, plastics, glass, ceramics, um, things like that are generally pretty good electrical insulators. Turns out they're also pretty good uh, uh, thermal or heat insulators, temperature insulators as well. Uh, and actually for the same reason. Um, things that conduct electricity, the electrons, some electrons, not all, but some electrons are really able, able to move really easily. Uh, things that conduct heat. One of the reasons that they conduct heat so well is that some of those electrons will get shaken bacon from the change in temperature and they'll be able to flow and transfer that throughout the material. Um, all right, insulator. Conductors, that's just a material that charges flow through easily. Um, just making sure we're all on the same page with those. Um, so uh, a battery, um, a battery is a device, uh, one definition, right? There are different definitions for different things. Uh, a battery uh, is a device that motivates charge to move from one place to another. Um, and then there are some things that we can kind of go differently through or some things that can be represented in slightly different ways. And so I'm going to mention this just in case uh, every now and again, there are people that have like a family member or a neighbor that is uh, really into this, uh, this stuff and uh, really has a good bit of technical knowledge. Um, so this is like an image of a battery. Um, and then over here, uh, this battery has multiple of these horizontal lines. So this line is like an electrical connection, could probably a wire. It doesn't have to be a wire, but probably a wire. So it's like a wire coming in and then the negative side of the battery and the battery, most batteries like this contain what they call multiple cells, like multiple mini batteries kind of inside of it. And so this is kind of like mini, mini battery or cell one. Uh, and then this is mini battery or cell two. And then this whole thing together is considered a battery. Now, that's the, the accurate technical way that folks would probably go, or the, the more accurate technical way that folks would go. Um, it's also common um, in this day and age uh, for folks just to draw um, one segment to be a battery. And so that's kind of like uh, the, the first page here, this first image. Um, uh, like if you have a family member that's an electrical engineer or something like that, or an electrician or just is into this stuff, they would say that this isn't a battery. This is a single cell, which would be a part of a battery. This isn't a battery, it usually has multiple cells. Now, we're not gonna worry about that distinction. I'm mentioning it just so that if somebody else talks to you about it, 
you don't feel like you've been lied to. <laughs> so the, the truth is, we will say, we will use these kind of synonymously in terms of symbols. We'll say, yeah, that's a battery. Um, and uh, we'll also say, this is a battery. Um, I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to worry about the distinction between cells and batteries. I share that with you only so that if a family member starts to discuss it, it, it doesn't feel like uh, uh, you have a bunch of stuff to figure out. Um, all right, then let's see, we'll try to get this out of the way. Um, oh, that's a new little thing in the jigger. That's kind of neat. What does this button do? Ooh. That's exciting. So um, in here, so this is uh, a combination of circuit diagram symbols and not circuit diagram symbols. When we talk about current, um, current is the amount of charge that moves through a spot, um, electrons moving through a circuit. So like if we're just looking at like maybe this corner right here. Um, come on. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, for Pete's sakes, there. There we go. <laughs> oh, this, the keystrokes that I use to make the beam larger and smaller are also uh, advancing this, the slides. That's the problem. So I won't change the size of this beam. Um, so if we're looking at this, uh, at this area right here, the current is like, how many charges per second go past this spot? Um, uh, and charge is measured in coulombs. So it's coulombs per second going past this spot. Um, and in reality, if it's a wire, it's electrons, it's negative charges. Um, but what happened way back in the day when they started putzing with charges and electricity, they knew that there were two types. Um, they didn't know which ones moved. This was well before long before um, they knew about atoms and they knew about a nucleus and they knew about electrons outside. They knew that there were two these two different charge types and they figured it came from the stuff that the thing was made out of. Um, so like if they would have like fur and a piece of glass, this was a common thing, fur or silk and glass. It was common for them to kind of rub those two things together and to see, hey, this is, you know, how we, we've got two different charged things. They had no idea about the idea of an atom. They just said, hey, one of them's positive, one of them's negative. And they just went, eh, we'll make this one positive. We'll make this one negative. And it turns out um, the one that they chose to be negative, we still call the negative one, the electron. And that's the one that moves. But um, usually when we talk about stuff, we just default to talking about positives. And so when we talk about current, um, and when they talked about current and just studied current back in the day, they just talked about positive charges moving through. So we have this weird deal where we'll say, hey, um, electrons are motivated to buy the battery to go away from the negative terminal of the battery, and they're motivated to go towards the positive terminal of the battery, right? Opposites attract. If we have a negative charge right here, it's going to be attracted towards the positive terminal. Uh, if I have a negative charge right here, it's going to be pushed away from the negative terminal, right? So we've got that going for the actual real direction of negatively charged electrons. But since we generally tend to talk about just inter absolute values of things, when they would talk about current, you know, 100 years ago, um, they would uh, talk about positive current. There's these things. And so they started to talk about what we call that is conventional current. Instead of talking about negative charges, if we just say, hey, it's like positive five amps of current or just five amps of current, we're talking about conventional current, which would be the imaginary positive charge is going the other direction. So um, it's, it can be a little bit uh, confusing, but it ends up, they both can kind of agree with each other, right? So if, uh, um, let's see, so if I have like a dollar and I give you a dollar, the flow for you is plus one, right? You are plus one dollar. The flow for me is minus one. I lost a dollar. So we can either talk about plus one going to you, or we could talk about the negative one 
coming to me because I'm now down a dollar. So they both can describe the situation accurately. You've gained a dollar. I've lost a dollar. You've gained plus one dollars. I've got now negative one dollars compared to what I had before. So that's kind of when we talk about current with electrons. It's negatively charged current going this way or conventional current would be positively charged current going this way. Now, no positives actually move, which is weird, but um, it's kind of like the metric system. Uh, it's really convenient, it's useful, um, but we don't switch because it's been around forever. Well, talking about the negative charges moving, it's the truth, it's what really is happening in these cases. Uh, but so many people already talk about conventional current that we just don't change. So there's that. Uh, the symbol for current in circuits is a capital I. Uh, current is measured in amps. Uh, like if it's five amps, we'd write five A or amps. An amp is the same thing as an ampere, that's the full word. And an ampere is the same thing as a coulomb per second. And I've just realized that I've been babbling on this slide for a long time. And I forget that I'm, yeah, I need to use my time. My apologies. Thanks for uh, not hanging up. I don't know. Um, other symbols for circuits, diodes. Um, like uh, a diode, the symbol in a circuit for a diode is this. Their diodes are like one-way valves. They will allow current to go one way, not the other. Um, uh, an LED is a diode. It's something that only allows current to go one way. Um, and when that current goes that way, it emits light. So they have almost identical um, diagrams. It's just an LED has these little arrows coming off of them. Um, and then uh, like a circuit diagram here, there are a few different ways to go. So there's the battery. This thing is called, an, this is an ammeter. If we're gonna measure the amount of current, how much current goes through a circuit, um, we use an ammeter and that basically counts the charges that go through per second. Um, and so it's like wire comes in, here's the ammeter, wire goes out. Um, and it's basically all the charges that go through that ammeter, it counts. Uh, this is one way to draw a light bulb. This is another way to draw a light bulb. It's like a wire coming in or a conductor coming in a little loop-dy, and then a wire going out, and then this glass bulb. Another way to draw a light bulb is actually on that diagram that I spent way too much time on. This is another way to draw a diagram where you say there's a line coming in, this ziggity zaggity line, wire going out. That's another way to, oh, another legitimate way to draw a light bulb. There are bunches of legitimate ways to draw light bulbs. It's weird. Uh, battery, and then these lines um, will often say that they're wires, but really they don't have to be a wire, it's an electrical connection. This means there's an electrical connection. So if I just connected this bulb and set it right on top of the battery, like floop, one touching right on top of the other, we could still use this long line to represent the electrical connection from the battery to the bulb. Um, no questions yet, I'm gonna keep going. Um, all right, circuits, quick reminders. Charges are forced to move by the battery. The battery is the motivator. Uh, wires are conductors. They allow charges to move easily. Um, for charges to move from one side of the battery to the other, they follow this path from the wires that uh, we connect outside. They have to go from one side of the battery to the other. Um, and complete circuits have a wire or a path that goes from one side of the battery uh, through some other device and then back to the other side of the battery. Um, conventional current, we spoke about that earlier. It's the imaginary movement of positive charges. That's the opposite direction of the mov movement of electrons. Um, okay, slightly new terms here. We haven't um, uh, we haven't discussed this part yet. Um, so a closed circuit that just means that we have a circuit with a full path that goes all a complete path, uh, wire through the battery, uh, wire light bulb back to the battery, right? It's got a complete path. If we have a complete path, the circuit works, the bulb lights, the motor runs, all the, the sensor works, whatever, then it's a closed circuit. 
uh, an open circuit is one where there's just not a full connection. Something's missing. Um, and an ammeter, we talked about this earlier on as well. It's a device that measures the current in the circuit. Current is measured in amps or coulombs per second. Um, there are a tunnel that uh, counts the charges that must go through. I'm going more quickly through those because I think we'd seen those earlier. Series, this is a, a new spot. So a series, uh, a circuit that any or any portion of a circuit that only has one path. So if there's uh, just one path that charges can go through, no like, bloop, there's a little split, bloop, back to a junction. Bloop. If there is a split, then that part's not in series. But if there's no split, if there's only one path, that section uh, is, a, is, a, is a series circuit. 